Good evening. Today is Thursday, July 18th, 2024, and welcome to the monthly video meeting of the ASCA Board of Directors. Tonight on this video call, we have Rick Gann, Donna Sims, Jody McClellan, Ann McCabe, David Clayton, Jan Wieson, Jillian Ward, Jerry Scheidt, myself, Susan Byrne, our Executive Secretary, Calla Jaco, and our two newly elected Board of Directors members, Diana Williams and Tanya Johnson. Thank you for joining us. And at this point, I will go ahead and call on Jody McClellan for to report on the Treasurer's report. Good evening. Thanks, Susan. Um, just a quick update on our account balances. The ASCA checking account is sitting at $152,511. The ASCA savings account is sitting at $129,450. The AEMD is $7,441. And the foundation is $41,487. Uh, yesterday, I had $32,000 transferred from the operating account to the savings account. So those are reflected in those new balances. I'm trying to keep the operating account around 150,000 and move things over monthly to the savings from there. Um, Jill had uh, posted a couple of questions that I wanna answer one that I can and then explain some of the others. Jill, to your question about the credit card, it is paid off monthly. It's used for office expenses and basically anything that they're charged monthly for, utilities, um, the janitorial service, uh, Microsoft, Constant Contact, everything that they can charge on a monthly basis goes onto the credit card and then they pay it off each month. You did ask about uh, the sick and vacation balances and the sales charge liabilities showing up on the balance sheet. I did speak to Tim about that after our meeting last week, and he was going to talk to Sarah to start linking it with the QuickBooks for the report is how he phrased it for me. Uh, it appears not to have been done, so I will double check with him on that and make sure that we get it set up to show on the balance sheet. Uh, for the Vanguard accounts, I did receive an email that the paperwork has been received that will allow us to link the Chase accounts to the Vanguard accounts so we can transfer money back and forth and they will uh, send me another message once that link is live or if they require additional paperwork. There's nothing out of the ordinary in the report for the June financials, um, but there are a couple of things that I would like to bring up. We're getting close to um, working on the 2025 budget. And so I wanted to bring your attention to my budget spreadsheet that I send you and specifically the remaining funds budgeted for the computer, for benefits slash insurance and the professional fees. If you take a look at the uh, right hand column, the far right column, uh, you can see that there's um, not enough left to carry us through through the end of the year. Enough budgeted is what I'm trying to say. Um, so those particular budgets, uh, particular buckets will run sh short by the end of the year. Uh, for benefits and insurance, I think we may have switched them in the budget because for the benefits insurance and for the business insurance, we budgeted $48,000 for the business insurance, and that's only $1,300 a month. Whereas the benefits insurance for the employees is closer to the 40,000 mark. So we may have shifted those, and so that may not be an issue uh, going forward. I have talked to Sarah about getting some clarification on the business insurance and how it is uh, charged because it's under an umbrella type of thing. And so there's different charges at different times of the year. Um, the employee benefit health insurance has gone up this year and, and also we're fully staffed for a change. So that has caused that to increase, but I think we're going to be okay if we just flip those for our budget next year. 
However, for the computer and the professional fees, um, I'm forecasting that we're going to run about $25,000 short in each of those. Uh, so bear with me just a minute. I really do have a point coming to all of this. Um, if you look at the bottom of the spreadsheet, you can see so far this year, we have a profit of about $132,000. If we, or on average, $22,000 a month on average so far. If we calculate that out, we're projected to have a potential profit of about $264,000. If we take out the $50,000 that we're short and like we would have spent if it had been in the budget already, and if we add in approximately, and I don't know the final numbers on this, so I'm just, again, these are just things to think about, the $100,000 that we're going to need for the Aussie Times in 2025, we reduce our potential profit to about $114,000 which sounds great, but doesn't even cover two months of operating expenses. We've come a really long way since 2022, 2023, when all we had in all of our accounts was $75,000. We now have an operating account sitting around 150, which covers two months of operating expenses. And our savings account is almost there to cover two, op two months of operating expenses. All that being said, Expenses are going to go up. We need to look at ways to increase our income to offset those increases in expenses. So we have some time to figure that out in the budget. Um, but I just want to make sure everybody is looking at that spreadsheet and aware of the numbers and can take a look at what's going on with that. And that is my report uh, for this month. Does anybody have any questions? I don't have a question, but I would like to make a comment just to tag on to what you just said. Um, I think we've come a long way. Um, a lot of different people, different boards have, have contributed to get us to this point. Um, we have a fee schedule that will become forthcoming. Um, Cal has helped prepare kind of a poll, if you will, because the data that I presented seemed overwhelming to the board. Um, so we are going to, um, revisit the fee schedule in bite-sized pieces. And we're going to start with just looking at some dollar amounts um, so that you can review, um, you know, where the last time, historically, the last time that they were increased and what our cash needs are now. And you can have, you know, you can, there's a comprehensive evaluation now that's been done, but just because we're going to do this first step does not mean that we would necessarily as a board agree to increase them right away. So look for that email. It's going to be done in phases. Kala will send that out in the next couple of days. And I just want to make sure that you guys understand that the expenses are part of it. I know I'm drilling it home over and over and over. Getting our expenses under control is one part of it. Reviewing our um, fees is another part of it. And um, we do have a very high functioning sponsorship and fundraising committee now. We've got a lot of new members and things are starting to happen very quickly. So we will be bringing in some monies, but it all works together. So I just wanted to tag on to what Jody said because the fee schedule information is going to be hitting your inboxes soon. And I hope that you will participate in it because the poll is going to give us some data as to, we'll just try to drill it down to make it a little more comprehensive for the board because there is a lot of details involved, but please participate um, so that once we come to a final um 
you know, once we come to, once the board comes up with a plan for rolling out fee increases over time, we need to make sure we're all on the same page so that when we send it out to the membership, they can see that we did a thorough evaluation. We've projected our, our cash needs moving forward. We're going to be printing the Aussie Times again, but but we owe it to the membership to give them all the pieces. Thanks, Jillian. Rick? Yeah, I just want to say, Jody, thank you for uh, what you've done with the Treasury report. Uh, it's come a long ways, but I do have one comment I'd like to make. Uh, it's a little concerning to me that the Treasurer is transferring funds without board knowledge. And I'm not saying that it wasn't warranted but a quick email to the board saying, I moved $30,000 from our main checking account to savings. That's, the board is notified. And it concerns me that that's not being done. I just Thank notified you. you. I've notified you every month during my report that we've moved money. And I don't recall anything being done previously about any notification. Um, so I, I, I consider this my notification that was moved. Okay. Uh, I don't know when you moved it. Could have moved it four weeks ago. Could have been three weeks ago. Could have been yesterday. I don't know. As I mentioned as a, in my report, I moved it yesterday. As a director, I just think it would be common courtesy to notify the board on our Noted. group list. Sure, thank you. I'll take that under consideration. Thank you guys. Okay, um, anybody have any further questions or comments on the reporting from the treasurer? If not, I will entertain a motion to accept the treasurer's report as submitted. This is Jerry. I make a motion to approve the treasurer's report as submitted. Thank you, Jerry. Can I get a second, please? Jillian, I'll second. Thank you. Okay. I have a motion on the floor to accept the treasurer's report as submitted. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those. I'm sorry. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Aye. Thank you. Okay, that treasurer's report is approved as submitted. We're gonna move right on to item number three on the agenda, which is the system liaison report. And that would be in David Clayton's wheelhouse. Thank you. Hey, good evening. Um, so uh, the IT committee and um, the people working on the computer have been working on their top 10 um, one of the things that has come up, and this seems to happen fairly often, they're still making fixes um, to different programs as things pop up. There's been some problem with office printing and then member printing. And they're working on, they've done some basic fixes to it. And right now they're in the, they're kind of testing it to make sure it all comes through. Um, they did fix the credit card issue. And then the other thing that they're starting to work on, this also has to do with some uh, changes and motions from the, the rally committee and the obedience committee. Um, but pending that, um, they're going to fix the ratch and the arch so that the points roll over. When the previous computer company uh, worked on that, um, they were kind of told that the points did not roll over. So that's how that was programmed, but that's not how it was done historically. And the, the, the motions themselves or the rule book, I guess, wasn't as clear. And it was an interpretation that was made at the time. Um, that's not the intent of either committee. So they want to make sure that these points roll over right now. Everything is in there. 
Um, it just has to be done by hand right now. So in future, um, the programming will be completed on that. They can move forward once the motions are approved. So that's my basic report. Thank you. Thank you, David. Okay, and the next item on the agenda, excuse me, agenda is um, the 2025 National Site Visit. And this is Jillian's. Well, it's not mine, but. <laughs> um, okay, you guys saw the motion on behalf of the 2025 National Show Chair for um, for the site visit to Winnemucca. I want to point out that I I did speak to Susan uh, Byrne about this. It seems that every year we have a dollar amount budgeted uh, within the national budget for site visits that encompasses pre-site uh, visits. Um, for the chairs and so on. And um, I would like to, we'll discuss the details of this, but I would like to get your feedback on maybe reaching out to the NAC and asking them if maybe they could come up with a mechanism to where the, the budget for 25 isn't due until October, but Often there will be site visits prior to the budget being approved by the board and possibly the NAC could come up with some sort of mechanism that allows a certain percentage of that budgeted amount to be utilized prior to uh, the budget being approved so that the board doesn't have to go through these motions every single year. We know we're going to have a national. We know there's going to be site visits, especially for the new sites. The existing sites that we've had recurring don't really fall into this category, but it's just something for us to consider moving forward how we might be able to streamline this. So um, Susan, do you want me to go through the specific dollar amounts Oh, I don't hear you. I know. I apologize. I was going to say, go ahead and uh, make the motion. And then during in the discussion, we'll come right back to you after the motion's on the floor and we'll have discussion. Okay. Okay. So I make uh, a motion to accept the, uh, the site visit expenses as listed with a not to exceed of $1,240. Uh, for the Winnemucca show site. Do I need okay. to list everything out or is that? No, we're going to do that in the discussion. So we have a motion on the floor for a Winnemucca site visit um, for the expenses for that particular e excursion, for lack of a better term, not to exceed $1,240. Can I have a set? Is there a second? This is Jerry. I'll second the motion. Thank you, Jerry. Okay, now, Jillian, we can go ahead and delineate, delineate everything that's included in the motion, and then we'll go around and see if anybody has any questions or concerns. Okay, so the show chair has requested the four specific people to attend. Um, Susan Byrne, Liz, Laura Gibson, myself, and Denise Creelman. Two are obviously flying from Texas, and there, there will be a little bit of fuel and then uh, Denise Creelman and I, both being in California, have agreed to travel together via my car. And so the estimate I have there for fuel is likely high, but I do live in California and you never know what you're going to run into with gas prices. So um, I would be requesting an exact reimbursement for the fuel used. Um, Susan Harris is also only charging for fuel one way. She is scheduled this site visit because she has to be in Reno already. So that's a way for us to save a little bit of money there. Additionally, um, she was able to get our rooms comped at, uh, the winners Inn and casino, which would be one of, um, the accommodations for Winnemucca. So we kind of have a 
a lot of things going on here for a reasonable amount of money. We we tried to nickel and dime it before we even presented the motion to the board. And I do appreciate uh, the show chair humoring me on that. And um, we we found a way for all of the people to come at a reasonable dollar amount. Just bear in mind that this money will go against the 2025 uh, site visit budget. This is not something in addition. Um, it's probably also worth noting that both Laura and Susan, while they have visited the site before, they visited the site through a different set of eyes in that it was a site that they needed to just find out if it would work. Um, they also did it out of their own pocket. So um, this time they're being requested to go to actually be boots on the ground and figure out what does and doesn't work and what will and won't work. And um, I, I did ask the show chair that if she could leave someone home, who would it be? And for the record, it would be one of the two people in my car. And the reason we're driving is so that I can bring as many people as we need for the same dollar amount. So I hope that's enough information for you guys, but I'm happy to answer further questions. Thanks, Jillian. Okay, uh, we're gonna do the same thing. Um, we're just gonna go around. And if you guys just have no comment or if you have any questions, please make sure that you ask us. All right, Jerry. I have, well, I'm gonna approve this expense. Uh, this is um, extremely low. As you all know, I've done the travel and lodging for several nationals and it's a much needed trip. And Jill, uh, thank you to you and um, all of the others that uh, worked on this to collaborate and keep those costs way down. So um, I approve this. Thank you. Jan? Um, I have no issue with it. I think it's important, especially that the chair has time to see this facility. I'm part of tracking. I'm going to be heading to Arizona and I cannot make the date that you folks are all going. And my stuff is outside the track. So I have said that I will do that tour to make sure we find sites in Winnemucca so that we don't have to travel. Um, and I will be doing that on my dime, but I definitely support that these uh, people, definitely the chair, has an opportunity to have her team there. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. David. David, we can't hear you even though it shows that you are not muted. There now you're muted. Okay. I have no questions. Thank Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, Anne. Um, I have no questions. Um, I think it's a great idea. I mean, we even found out with multiple visits to uh, Grand Island that there were additional things that we needed to see. So as many times as we can get on site and look at the details, the better. Thank you. Jody. I'm as as long as they put the funds in the budget to visit the site, they can go as often as they want. Thank you, Donna. Uh, yes, I agree. I think this is is much needed to make sure that things are set up right and run efficiently. And uh, I think that's a great price. OK, great. Thank you. And Rick. Yeah, I'm OK with your request. Thank you. Okay. Um, Diana, do you have any th questions or anything you'd like to add? Diana, you're muted. Can you hear there me you now? Go. Yes, ma'am. Okay, sorry. I lost my toggle on the computer. <laughs> Um, no, I think it's a great price, and I appreciate the efforts being made to bring the expenses down. So go for it. 
Thank you. And Tanya? Uh, I have no objections. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, you guys, just um, I checked today just to make sure that we were still in the ballpark. So we can do, uh, Laura and I will be flying, of course, I'm not making that drive. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> we can do round trip out of Austin for 419. Um, I will have the mileage um, and uh, it's probably going to be maybe half a tank of gas. So my gas, of course, will be much less than what will be costing the California folks. And uh, just on top of this, the two of us from Texas are definitely paying for our other, our second night in the hotel because the, just so you're all aware of the date, um, we will fly August 14th meet with the Winnemucca manager, Mr. Peterson, and uh, that will be on the 15th. And that basically is going to start at 8 a.m. So the two of us that are flying into Reno will be picked up by the chair, Susan Harris. Uh, we will have the two, the one night comped for the two rooms of the one night in Winnemucca. And the two of us from Texas will be having a uh, renting a room that we are paying for ourselves that'll be close to the hotel so we can get a shuttle to get back on the plane on Friday morning. So um, at this point, if there are no further questions, I'd like to call for the vote for the motion presented by Jillian to um, allow an amount not to exceed $1,240 for the five individuals listed to have a site visit to Winnemucca on August 15th. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you guys. Um, and the next item on our agenda is a topic that we discussed at an earlier meeting. It was in June. We have members that have not been dealt with honestly from breeders that they have purchased dogs from, which brought this whole question up. Because we as a board of directors spend a lot of time, and some points I would say an inordinate amount of time, dealing with disputes between breeders and buyers and in the particular case that brought this discussion forward, according to the buyer, um, she had been told by the breeder, the breeders in the US, the buyer is in Europe, that this puppy that was being purchased would come with both ASCA and AKC papers. However, when the transaction was completed and Callie, you may need to refresh my memory. I'm thinking it was approximately two years ago um, that the dog only has ever been registered with AKC. So then it came back to us. Of course, there, to the best of my knowledge, there have been no court proceedings as yet, but basically there was a lot of miscommunication um, from the previous office manager when this particular dog was submitted for the other registry registration process. And for any of you who are not familiar with that process, it is for dogs that trace back to 100% ASCA lineage. That being said, the offspring of two ASCA registered dogs the that offspring is not eligible to be registered through the other registration process. Mm -hmm. Consequently, that's where we ended up because of that particular situation seemed to be unfair. And we all know that this can happen. Um, just so you know, the other registry registration, we call it an ORR in the office, um, requires the signature of the breeder of the dog, uh, the DNA pictures, uh, both sides and a front view, um, 
Let me think. It's been a while. Maybe that's it. I, I literally can't remember. And then, of course, there's a fee for that. So if in this particular situation, let's just say the sire was not ASCA registered, but both of his parents had been registered, this puppy, which would have been a, the, basically the third generation down from the ASCA registered siren dam, whose offspring was not registered, and then this puppy was submitted for other registry registration, the dog would have been eligible. And there's where the concern has come. You know, all members that are asking, why are you considering, you know, opening up our registry? That's not what this is all about at all. This discussion, in my opinion, is simply to see if there would be any other path to have these dogs, which are ASCA lineage dogs, if there would be any other way for those dogs to be registered. So um, please, let's discuss this. You know, it's definitely a hot topic among some of our members that have asked kind of, they didn't, I think there wasn't enough information for them to form any kind of an opinion. So let's go down the line and see if anybody has any concerns, questions, or anybody wants to volunteer to lead up this research process. Okay, Rick, I'm going to go with you first. Okay, thank you. Uh, I agree. We put information out to the membership to leave those guys to assume and that's what happened. Uh, I don't have a problem with finding an avenue that we can include these dogs, but absolutely everyone will be 100% ask a parentage. Uh, I just think we dropped the ball when we posted to the membership. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Donna? And um, I don't have anything further to add. Thank you, Donna. Jody? Nothing to add. Thank you. Anne? Um, I just want to make sure that we aren't actually trying to find a way to circumvent DNA requirements or breeders' wishes. Um, because I think those are very important aspects to consider. Thanks. Thank you, Ann. David? Uh, yeah, I think that, yeah, there was a miscommunication with the membership over this, but it seems like um, if they're 100% ASCA registered, that this has been a loophole um, that needs to be addressed. So these dogs should be included or could be included um, as far as the DNA, we shouldn't really go there right now. Thank you. Thank you, David. Jan? We spend a lot of time on these kind of issues. So um, if they're ASCA registered, if we can look at the possibilities of some kind of situation, limited registry, I don't know. Um, I... I hope somebody is interested in investigating what options. Um, yeah, this isn't to open up a can of worms and allowing open registry. This is to try to help people out that have had an unfortunate situation with breeders. And even when we contact, they're not available to us. So I think it's important that we kind of do some kind of solution and if membership has an idea, maybe they can give us some input and maybe we can move forward from this. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Jillian? Well, I might be unpopular. I guess I'm used to it. Um, this is a slippery slope, in my opinion. I'm not in favor of it. As, as badly as I do feel for the people who were wronged, 
Um, there will be people who take advantage of this and then we will lose control of our registry. So I'm not in favor of it. I'm also not able to volunteer for one more thing. <laughs> so someone's going to research it. I, for some reason, think I'm the next person in line and I would like to decline that assignment in advance. Jillian, this was a volunteer, uh, not an investigation. This is a research. This is not the same as an investigation. Thank you I, for your point. I, I wanted to be certain. <laughs> point taken. How's that? Um, Jerry? I'm not in favor of it. We have rules in place for a reason, and I'm always afraid that once you start making exceptions, then pretty soon you really don't have a rule. Uh, you know, I'd like to help um, the, these folks out, but it really is, in my opinion, between the breeder and the buyer issue. And I don't think we should be uh, circumventing or finding a way around our own rule to make something happen for them. Thank you, Jerry. Diana. Hi there. Um, I did read up on this topic today because it piqued my interest. And um, my thoughts are she has a civil matter with the breeder. That's my first thought. You always, I always go back to the contract. Are we here to help the membership? We are, as long as it's within the guidelines of our existing policies. We can tell them what would be the best path for them to take, but I don't think we are in the position to change paths you know, just for this particular case, because it sets a precedent in the future that we're going to continually change our path. Um, I think she needs to use the avenues available to her now, if they are available to her. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Tanya? Um, my thoughts are mostly along the lines of not opening our registry to loopholes. So I guess that's where I stand. Thank you. Okay, so we're pretty much split half and half. Do I have any director that feels they might have the time to further investigate this to see if there might be anything that we would be able to help these guys that get lied to by their breeders and taken, I feel they are sometimes taken advantage of. Um, and I, I definitely feel unfortunately that some of our European members are being taken advantage of more so than those that are here in the States. So if you guys think that this might be worth investigating at all, is there anybody that might feel that they would have the time to delve into this? And if you guys don't think it's worth investigating, we will put it aside and just move forward and definitely stick to all of the, the rules as they are currently written. Um, this is David. I'll look into it. Um, Thank you, David. Look like there's parity. That's my problem with it. It looks like if you have an AKC dog, Mm -hmm. and ask a parentage behind it then it's fine but if you know you have, have an ask a bred dog and for the people in europe filing a lawsuit in the united states is probably not going to happen and i would think some of the people selling dogs to europe are kind of if they're not going to be honest or they decide to dump aska then there's no really repercussion for them and while True. it is a ball beware I think it's worth looking at it um, a little bit further and trying to see if we can have parity between the two. And if we decide not to, then we have existing rules that we need to follow. Thank you, David. Um, in answer to your question, Tanya, I do not know in this particular situation that I think is so fresh in all of our minds, um, the buyer was in Europe is in Europe. The breeder is not. And consequently, you know, you do have the so many things to consider 
oftentimes there's a language barrier. Um, and just like David just mentioned, the possibility of a non-U.S. citizen filing any kind of a lawsuit in the U.S. is basically not going to happen. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. The contract was uh, written, but the verbal portion was saying that the that ASCA registration was would be with this dog. Not that portion of it was not in the written contract. Thank you, Calla. Always at the ready. I appreciate you. So, David, if you want to look at, and, you know, that's just the one situation that is really fresh in our minds because it was just last month. And Jan is absolutely right. We frequently have these requests to look into a purchase or, you know, a situation with our dogs. And, and of course, those people that are making those requests are definitely hoping that we can help them. You know, the standard line is ASCA does not get involved in breeder buyer disputes or breeder breeder disputes. And while that is very true, sometimes it can come across a little heartless. And that's there's where we are. Is there some way to help these people? Because this this particular puppy who's no longer a puppy in question is the offspring of two ASCA registered dogs. So that's the crux of the matter and definitely the origin of the inquiry was if there was anything we could do to help these types of situations not come to us and utilize our time. And I don't say that just, you know, Callously, it does take a lot of time to do the research into in these situations. So thank you, David, for stepping up to the plate to do some research into that. So we'll look forward to hearing what you find out and see what we might be able to do. All righty. That brings us to the last item on the agenda tonight, and that would be the ratification of last month's email business. And any director can make the motion to approve that. This is David. I so approve. Thank you, David. I have a second. This is Donna. I'll second it. Thank you, Donna. We have a motion on the floor from David Clayton and a second by Donna Sims to approve the and ratify all business conducted via email over the last month. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Okay, you guys, thank you so much for your attention and your time this evening. That concludes our monthly meeting of the ASCA Board of Directors. And everybody, until next time, stay safe and stay cool. Thank you so much for attending. And those of you out there that are listening, have a great evening. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.